We are in the back bay and we are headed to our 142 project. Plaster is continued. I was gonna make it, I was gonna run across the street, but not gonna make it. Um, so plaster continues, but the guys are actually installing the door slabs on those easy jam doors. I think they're starting actually some of the shadow reveals. So let's get, let's take a look at what, uh, how they're making out. Gotta love elevator access. So these actually go to each unit. And when this opens up, there'll actually be a door in front of it. It will be open when this opens, but that will provide security to someone getting in the elevator uh, and accidentally taking it to the wrong floor. I was really hoping someone was standing there. So plaster continues over here. Take a look what's going on in here. So ceiling in this living room is all done. We get the invisible speakers to skim over uh, and they're working on the fireplace here. Talk about a couple of details on this. So this is actually gonna be a concrete uh, look, um, a marble plaster, and we wanted it to be its kind of own volume. So we've separated this with an intentional shadow bead here. Steve's installing it. And this will give a nice hard stop ed, stop, uh, stop bead for that marble plaster to come up to. So we're not trying to have this really clean, almost like when you paint two uh, surfaces a different color, you get that kind of wavy line. This gives us a really nice intentional stop. We'll do the same thing at the floor. And you know, we have the half inch gap at about four inches up for our baseboard. We'll do a half inch gap there. And then a half, uh, actually that's, I believe close to an inch uh, and that inch is actually our heat release for this fireplace. So some of the, not all the heat comes off the front of it. Some of it goes up through the duct and then across that ceiling to help um, basically shut all the, the heat out of there. So start with the ceiling and then work into the walls. So I should... No, you're good. I appreciate it. Thank you. I'll probably get nabbed for copyright, but that's all right. <laughs> uh, I forgot the guys actually aren't here. They're, they're working on our Eastern project, but um, some of these doors, you can st start to see what they look like installed. Let's see, this is the guest bath bathroom here. Let me see if I can hold that. So standing back, that door is completely flush with that wall. So when that's plastered, you, you won't have anything except for that little eighth inch gap really, really clean looking. And then you guys have seen in a uh, previous site visit, but this continuous uh, half inch gap will actually be routed in the bottom of the door and going over to that. And then same distance in will actually go up and around for a big square panel detail. But man, that's gonna look really slick when it's all done. So this is a easy jam, in swing jam. So you can see it's flush with the outside, but it actually swings in. Pretty trick how they do that. They actually have a stop, uh, basically a stop bead here, and then a rabbit in the door with a traditional barrel hinge. So on the inside, which you know, you basically pick which side you're gonna see the most of and keep that side flush. You can see the inside, that jam is way back. So the door is set in, and in this room, you can see all the weedy. This will get the marble plaster as well. Um, you guys have asked before, that is the product, Dev Lime. Uh, good luck getting it. You do need to be certified uh, and they are particular with who they work with, uh, which I love. Um, but this whole room will get a complete marble plaster look. Man, I can't get out. Hold on. All right, cool. All right, working our way down. Same thing on this bedroom and this bedroom. Those doors swing in uh, so they are flush and you actually see what that looks like all plastered. Really clean. I don't know if you can see that with the, the GoPro, but let me swing around. I'm not gonna mess with that door, it's shimmed, but you can see the same thing, the, the bedroom door, you don't want it flush on the inside, you want it flush from the outside. Uh, and we don't have it yet, or we have it, but we haven't installed it. Really, really slick for Marnie hardware. Uh, very small rosettes. I actually think there's no rosette, uh, but this is what I want to show you guys. This is our sample room, our baseline room. So this room has been painted and basically, you can see how clean and crisp everything is. Um, the fruits of 
Steve and his guys and, and Ver, uh, Verge and everyone at Ver, Van Gerven plastering um, did a tremendous job getting this room super flat, uh, super straight, and just looks incredible. And the guys um, have got this room completely painted. Uh, there is still a lot of man hours that, go, that goes into that um, to make sure everything is perfect, but you can just see that, that wall there is a, an accent wall. That's where the bed will sit. You can see the start of our true fig outlets. So um, basically the plate will go on and sit flush. We'll actually spray those the same color as the wall. You can see our, our high velocity uh, registers routed out into the floor. Looking slick. You can see our half inch shadow bead. So the guys, I saw them in here laying on their, their bellies making sure the inside of that looked really clean. You can see just the importance of getting everything nice and straight. You know, oftentimes I've seen this flare out and not be in line, but it's just not an option here. It needs to be absolutely perfect. And it's really important to make sure they do get down and in there because oftentimes those inside corners, you know, might have a an open spot or you know missing paint so it's really important to get that uh, painted you know and and actually see it even though the likelihood of someone laying on their bellies looking in there is pretty rare floors are unfinished we had these uncovered um, just so the client could see kind of what's going on but actually here's the sample so we are going to be doing a water pop white with a traffic coating on it. So you can see it's a little lighter. So this place is just gonna get brighter and brighter. It's gonna look really incredible. Let's go up and look at another one of those doors upstairs. So you can see, here's an outswing door, not plastered yet. So another in-swing, because it's a bedroom. The outswing, uses the concealed hinges. These are made by Rock York. But same look. So when they swing out, they use the concealed. When they swing in, they use the barrel. Same thing here. This is one of the closets. That door will swing in. So in here, this is where we had to think this through. In the master or primary bedroom, that closet door swings in, but we wanted that flush that door swings in. We would love that flush, but it's more important that in the hallway it's flush. Closets, flush here. This door, I think it's here or it's gonna be here really soon. Uh, that's gonna be a glass panel, all frosted, pocket door, no trim around it. It's just a glass pocket door. It's gonna look really slick. Uh, and the guys did a really great job kind of seeing here, but there's a groove for that glass to go in and there'll be a bubble seal back in that kerf cut. So when the door shuts, it hits that bubble seal with a nice tight seal. And this room, uh, same thing, marble plaster, stone in the back there. Uh, but the marble plaster, this is all the base coat. So multiple coats of base coat, uh, getting everything flushed out. You see all our recessed glass channel, just about, I don't know, maybe a 16th. So that's how much marble plaster will go on top, about a 16th to get that stuff flush protected our bottom track. It's gonna look slick. What else we got going on? I think we've already showed, oh, skylight. So walkable skylight has been installed. Now, real quick story in this, we actually had a previous manufacturer that we inherited when we took over the job uh, building this skylight. Uh, we had some concerns with the thermal break uh, and so much so that when it was installed without the glass, this was sweating pretty bad uh, in the winter time when we had the heat on. So we worked with a company that could do a thermally broken walkable skylight. Walkable because I'll show you when we get up on the roof, this is going to be completely flush with our patio pavers. Um, and looks like they're going to start prepping for plaster in here. And that board's gonna go right up to the underside of glass. So when you look down, it's just gonna be pure sky. 
and that's pulling in roughly you know 25 square feet of natural light and right now we're on staging but it's going to pour down into that two-story space i'll get up in the roof real quick There it is. So I believe there's four or five layers and what you're seeing, these aren't water dots. These are actually small uh, glass pebbles almost. Uh, so you don't slip. Uh, but our patio pavers will sit on a uh, pedestal system and they'll come up right tight to this. So it's similar to our wine cellar at our Lincoln project where it's gonna be in the floor. And even though it's glass, and you think that you might not be comfortable walking across it, when everything else is flush and it's just patio pavers, you're really not even gonna second guess it. You're just gonna be really comfortable walking across it. It's solid. Here's our pavers actually. They're three quarter inch porcelain. And I think we're getting ready to get the rest of them here so we can start installing. And that's gonna be an awesome, awesome completion to our roof deck. Uh, with the exception of some cabinetry and fire pit. Steve just told me that I, I had more to film. So I'm gonna walk through, I'm gonna do my best job. Correct me if I'm wrong. So we were talking about how we keep the flat ceiling down below and how we keep everything coplanar. And I'm gonna do my best job explaining what we're looking at here is this soffit. Um, so I'm gonna start with the light. You, you kind of ended with that. But we had this plastered in light and we had this flange and this had to be modified. We talked about that in a previous episode. But this is our baseline for how much plaster we're going to be uh, putting on this blue board. That needs to be translated to our corner bead. And that corner bead needs to be set at the same elevation. So it's completely level. You throw a level on that, dead nuts. Uh, and then this entire corner bead is set with a laser. Down this way, vertically, and horizontally. So that is absolutely dead, dead, dead nuts straight. We have this seam here, and I think I've posted about this before, but that seam will get soldered and then sanded and filed completely flat so that can't ever crack um, you know, through the paint, nothing. That, 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 that needs to be one continuous piece of corner bead. From there, they're gonna set up a, ro a rotating laser, and then that's going to basically take this surface and then translate it up to the, the ceiling here. You can see that chalk line. And what that's doing is making sure that when they plaster to this bead, they're plastering enough material out to that blue line up here. So then that surface is completely straight. And then same thing back here. You can actually, this is actually a great example. So they'll take this and run that laser straight across. And look at that. You can see it's almost probably about a light three eighths uh, where that line ended up tight, in tight over here. So that gives them, you can see it, same thing here. It's tight in the corner, works its way out. Look at that, dead nuts on the corner bead. And that's how they understand exactly how much plaster has to be on. And we end up with a completely flat soffit on vertical and horizontal. And Steve, you didn't even mention it, but we'll get to this in a future episode, these custom made HVAC registers. Now we're done. If you are digging these site visits, you know what to do. Let us know below and we will see you next week.